بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده Dear respected viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another brand new episode of the program entitled Towards the Origin and to all of those who will be joining with us now and later through our Facebook page, YouTube channel and live streaming via our Channel S website From today, in fact from tonight's program we will be having our email address displayed at the bottom of your TV screen and just for your convenience it's towards the origin at chsuk.tv should you have any questions suggestions feedback please feel free to email us on once again towards the origin at chsuk.tv our tonight's discussion is on the topic of equality what does Islam say about equality Living in the society that we are in, we are very much fortunate enough to be protected by the law. But how much all of us here, we understand about the true term and definition of equality. The glorious Quran confirms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed created men and women equal. So what is our understanding of equality? Why do we fail to understand the different statuses? Or why do we have that barrier whether it be the intellectual barrier, the financial barrier, economical barrier and so on, which differentiates or discriminates one from another. All of this and many more, inshallah, we will be discussing in our tonight's programme. And to discuss this topic, we have with us the honourable guest who is a graduate from Al-Azhar um, University, Egypt, who is a respected Imam and Khatib of the famously known mosque, Regent's Park Mosque, Fadilat al-Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, thank you very much for joining us so late at night. Barakallahu alaikum. Many thanks to you for giving this opportunity. Wa well, yeah. um, Our tonight's topic is equality. That's now, right. the first thought that comes into our mind we live in a society that, alhamdulillah, we are protected. Not many, many of us are fortunate enough, those who are living in the eastern part of the world. Um, here in the Western society, there are laws that protect us, that guarantees us, whether it be on religious ground, gender, age, and so on. Now, as Muslim, um, we do understand that all men and women are equal, but yet when it comes to the practical demonstration, we can clearly see that there is an element of difference that is visible in the society. Now, to start with our tonight's program, what does Islam say in terms of equality? That's right. Um, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi akmala lana deenana wa atamma alayna ni'matahu wa radhiya lana al-Islam deena. Allahumma radhiyna billahi rabba wa bil-Islam deena wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallama nabiyyan wa rasoola. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. أما بعد um, Islam is a very beautiful and great religion. Hence the teachings of Islam are great and extraordinary and excellent and beautiful. Islam is a beautiful religion because Islam talks about equality amongst the human beings, equality between men and women, equality in many things between Muslims and non-Muslims. Islam is a beautiful religion because it talks about coexistence, it talks about the disease of racism and problems of nationalism and many more. But tonight would like to highlight uh, on a very important subject and that is the equality. What does Islam say about the equality? Mm -hmm. Now when we look at the uh, human beings in general, Bani Adam, the children of Adam, we find instruction in the Noble Quran, the Glorious Quran. Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-Isra in verse 70, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Allah the Almighty said in this beautiful verse in Surah Al-Isra in verse 70, He says, Indeed, we have honoured the children of Adam. We have honoured 
the children of Adam. And we have carried them on land and sea. So we provided and we created uh, vehicles for them on land and other types of vehicle on sea, such as sheep and boats and so on and so forth. So he invented forms of transportation for human beings. And then he says, and have provided them with at-tayyibat, lawful good things. So he gave us as human beings tayyibat, the lawful good things. So whatever in Islam is permissible is good and beneficial for us. And whatever is prohibited in Islam is bad and harmful for us. So therefore we understand when we look at the word halal, it has a synonym which is pure and beneficial. And haram has a synonym which is bad and harmful. وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا And then Allah the Almighty says and have preferred them above many of those whom we have created with remarked preference. So Allah the Almighty he gave us a rank and status <coughs> over other creation. So human being has honor. Uh, human beings have been honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the takreem and tashreef and, and ta'zeem a special ta'zeem from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he granted us many uh, bounties and favors. Does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirm by saying that when you say one of the best kind, one of the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the human being. The the term that, you, that we commonly hear in our subcontinent, Ashraf al-Makhluqat. Yes, Ashraf al-Makhluqat, yeah. So best of the creation. Yeah, so when yeah. you say best of the creation, mm -hmm. so that means by default, it's understood that we have the responsibility, the highest, highest yeah. responsibility. Exactly. That's of, of course, whenever Allah the Almighty praises a nation or a people, He gives them responsibilities. We never can become uh, a special people without uh, uh, being responsible. Um, also, when we look at the Holy Quran in Surah Taha, in verse 55, we see Allah the Almighty is talking about the origin of human beings and the program the name of our program is towards the origin Indeed. which is very important uh, theme because every one of us we are going back to or we are returning to towards the origin um, the actual root yes yes and um, there is a saying in arabic Kullu shay'in yarja ila asli. everything goes back to its root or the origin so let's look at the origin of human beings so allah the almighty says in surah ta in verse 55 minha khalaqnakum وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَىٰ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from earth we created you, O human beings. From earth we created you. مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ And we, I will take you back to the earth again. So people will die and they'll be buried. So they will go back to the earth again. وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ and then it's وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَىٰ And the people will, will, be, will be brought back to their life again after the death. So وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَىٰ So every one of us as human beings, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, our root, our origin is earth, the dust, the turab. Um, a very pious um, scholar of Islam, he was walking in his village and um, there was an arrogant individual in that, in, that, in that society or in that community. He was just uh, uh, passing, he bumped into the, that uh, past sheikh or that past individual, a scholar of Islam. And the man, the arrogant or the man who had the, the onkar, the burai, that man, he said, uh, he, he told that, that past uh, sheikh or the past scholar, they don't you know who I am? Like, mm. you know, people, the way the people post, they say, you know, you don't know who I am. Like, don't you know who I am? So the sheikh, he beautifully defined and described that person. He said, yes, I know you. I know who you are. Then the man said, like, you know, tell me who I am. If you know the reality of me, then tell me I'm the, the most powerful. I'm the, I'm the leader. I'm, the, I'm everything in this community. So the sheikh, he described and he defined the person. He said, Asluka nutfatun qadira. Your origin 
is a dirty drop of fluid, meaning people would avoid, people would, would, would clean as soon as you know, it comes out. Asluka nutfatun qadira. Your origin is a, a drop of fluid which people don't like. And then he says, wa akhiruka jifatun madira. And your ending is a stinky um, piece of meat meaning people die and then they, they become rotten and then, you know, uh, you know, become stinky and people people try and stay away. They and decay. Avoid. They may yeah. decay, yeah. Yeah, decay. And then he says, وَأَنْتَ تَحْمِلُ بَيْنَ جَنْبَيْكَ العذرة. And you are carrying a bag of, of, of stool in your stomach. And that's your origin. So what he's trying, the sheikh is trying to say that, remind or remember your origin. He's reminding that person about his origin. So every one of us, our reality is that actually, is, is the nutfatun qadira wa jifatun madhira, which is our ending. So this is where we come from. Our root is turab, dust, earth. Just to add where we have beautifully summarized it, the origin of the human being. Now, in today's society, within our community, it's prevalent that we have some sort of understanding that I am better than the other. Yep. I am superior than the other. And in order to do that, we see that a lot of th organizations or institutions being formed or even the religious um, uh, mosque or the religious institution being formed so that at the end, the title would be so-and-so has opened it. Yep. Even though they might not intentionally yes. do that, but there is that sort of element there. Yep. Uh, Isn't that constituted the same understanding? Verily. Um, there is a problem uh, which is dealt by the scholars of, of Tazkiyya, the purification mm. of the hearts. So the problem is called Hubbul Jah, that everyone wants to be superior. Everyone wants to have like some sort Enjoy of the highest status. Yes, some respect, some status in society. And everybody's competing. Correct. Know, competing one another. Competition in good things is okay. But defaming others and undermining others, a competition through undermining and defaming others is not obviously accepted and uh, uh, preferred by our So the religion. concept of equality sits there very nicely then. Of course. And when we look at the concept of equality in Islam, it is more interesting. Sometimes people, th people might think that equality is just, it's an absolute equality, meaning everybody is same. But Islam differentiates. There is a measurement where we can uh, identify whether someone is good or bad from a religious perspective. But I've heard people are saying that, you know, there's nothing they call bad or good. Everyone's, everyone's good. Everyone's. Yeah, is this, uh, have you heard of I, this kind of. Uh, I, I have. And uh, to, to, an interesting, I would like to share that they say that there is nothing good or bad. It's just the thinking that what makes it yeah. good or bad. So even if you tell them, like, you know, the actions of human beings, like, you know, we can identify through the actions by looking into the actions of people, but they would say, no, people are all the same, and you can't judge, you can't make you a judgment. You can't make a judgment. Now, yeah. the other thing I've also noticed, there's some sort of mistake in there. When we say about equality, uh, many a times I've come across that people, I don't know whether it's a mistake or a confusion that they have between the term equality and identicalness. Mm -hmm. So... They are two different words. Of course, yes. Now, how identity, identity or identical. Mm -hmm. So now, not everything that's equal does mean that it's identical. That's now, right. they have that misconception, like, how, how, how does Islam differentiate that? So, obviously, every one of us, we have our identity. And Islam doesn't undermine, and Islam doesn't condemn the identity. Some people, I've, I've, I've found brothers, like, uh, you know, who say, if you ask them, like, where are you from, brother? They'll say, oh, I'm from the land of Allah, and I don't want to say where I am from. So they kind of deny or they try to hide their identity, because they think, you know, just saying that I'm from that specific place, it would go against the religion. It is not something what Islam says. Islam says, um, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surat al, uh, Surat al Hujurat, uh, a very famous verse that many people know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surat al Hujurat, in verse 13, He says, Ya ayyuhad nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ 
إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse that O mankind, O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female. We have created you from dhakar and untha, from a male and female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا And made you into different nations and tribes. So Allah the Almighty, He sent people, He created people in Africa, in Australia, in Asia, in Europe. So He sent people to different nations and different race. And also tribes, Qabail. So Qabail is the jama' or the plural of Qabila. Mm. So He sent people to different tribes and nations. Qabail. What is the purpose? What is the reason behind creating people in different uh, different places and different nations and different tribes. He, if he wanted, he could make everybody the same. He want, he could make everyone Bengalis, for example. He could make everyone English. He could make everyone Oh, Arabs. can have only one race yeah, in one the One race, as I said, yeah, one race only. But the purpose behind the creation of people in different nationalities, different tribes, a different race, so that لتعارفوا, so that you may know one another, so that you may recognize one another. So this is where the identity comes. So being, having identity is, is not something bad. It is something to know and, and to, to, to recognize one another. But to be proud in a negative way, to be arrogant and to have some sort of like, you know, uh, some sort of takabur uh, and, and tafakhur. And in Bengali we say, oh, kar, you know, go up. Is it like the way the Iblis said, Ana khayrum min in, yeah, min nari min nari wa yeah, Because he had the arrogance. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna man indahu mithqala dharratin min al-kibr. If anyone has a small grain of kibr in his heart, will never smell Jannah, will never enter into Jannah. Kunu manushir bidar jidi ohon kar take, ewan go up take, ekta shorishar danar mato. Rasul Karim Sassam bolan jay, oi bekti kokono Jannah ter, kuno uh, kuno um, jannat ke smell korte parbe na jannat er pashe jete parbe na jannat dukte hi parbe na so um shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created us into different nations and tribes so that we know we may know one another so based on that first we are allowed to say where we are from we can say we are from bangladesh we are from pakistan we are from somalia wherever we are from because this is to know one another without having any kind of superiority of or feeling of superiority in our hearts then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here he gives the criterion He's, he gives us the measurement so he says who is better so what is better in islam Let's try to understand. So he says very clearly here, Inna akramakum. Verily, indeed, the most honored one, the best one amongst you, is the one who fears Allah the most, who has the taqwa, the God consciousness, the fearfulness of Allah. So, Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. Now, the word taqwa, when we mention the word taqwa, sometimes we may have a very limited understanding of the word taqwa. Taqwa means the God consciousness, meaning being aware of all the commandments and prohibitions of Allah. Piety, the obligations mm. and, the, and the prohibitions of Allah. Also the scholars of Islam, they say taqwa is a concept which is in between bayn al-khawfi wa raja meaning a believer is, is fearful. He fears Allah, but at the same time he is hopeful. He's not hopeless. So basically between hope and despair. Yeah, between hope and despair. You see, we have in our religion, we had uh, more than one sect. So we had m many sects in Islam, the firqa, when we say. We had one firqa um, called uh, firqa khawarij, the khawarij. So khawarij, they based their doctrine, their understandings of Islam upon the fear. So everything is fear, khawf, fear. So, based on the fear, the concept of khawf, they would prohibit many things in Islam which is permissible. And we find people uh, of those kind of sort in our society, even today, those who resemble the khawarij of the past. So people, those who are very hasten, those who hasten in saying things haram, 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 you know, they, they make um, a lot of things haram. They also do a lot of takfir. There, there are a lot of restrictions in place that yeah, yeah. even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might have not placed it. Exactly. And the other thing also we have to understand, when we say about fear, it does not mean out of hatefulness or out, out of anything that will make us uh, destroyed or out of anything that, any negative connotation. It's out of 
humbleness, exactly. out of love, out of respect. Yes. It's like the way we love our dads, our yep. parents, but at the same time yes, we're fearful. Yes. But that fearful because does not mean the in reason, a negative way. That's the reason why the scholars of Islam, they they try to create something in between Allah and his, and his slave, and that is love. Because if you love Allah, then you will work for him. Correct. If you love somebody, then you'll work for, for that person. So <coughs> love is very important. In kuntum Allah, if you love Allah, Allah. So now let's come back to taqwa again. So the taqwa also cannot be completed without the character. So wherever we look in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi we see the word taqwa is accompanied by the character. So there is a hadith of Prophet sallallahu where he says, Ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt. The fear Allah wherever you go. Fear Allah. Some people say, well, we are in uh, England, so we can't fear Allah. <laughs> you know, some people say, oh, we're in university, in college. We're in business. We can't, we can't observe the commandments of Allah. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fear Allah wherever you are, but according to your capacity. Do as best as you can. So, inna akramakum inda Allah. The taqwa comes with the character. So, Prophet Sallam said, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُوهَا Then, towards then, he said, وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ Be good to people. Conduct behavior. You know, you're dealing with people. Your, your interaction with people is counted. Very important, many people neglect. People might be doing a lot of good deeds, but when it comes to talk to other people, they would, uh, you know, uh, they would offend, they would like, you know, undermine, they would condemn, they would criticize and so on and so forth. JazakAllah khair, on that note, we'll have to take a short break and okay. we'll continue the discussion Inshallah. when we come back. My dear viewers, we are discussing tonight equality. We've been listening about the importance of the fundamental element of Islam, that is equality. Do stay tuned with us. We'll be back in a few moments. You're watching Towards the Origin. Wassalamu alaikum.